guys, Tills20 here and welcome back to Oceania. It's been seven or so episodes and we've pretty much just done big picture, big planning episodes and not really much detail work. So today let's get down into the city and start detailing some areas up. I've been pretty keen to do this and particularly around the bridge area leading into the downtown. I've just been feeling really inspired to work in this area. So that is what we're going to be doing in today's episode. Uh, and I think why I feel so inspired about this area is because we're going to get this really cool mix between a uh, historical downtown area, because I wanted this whole area around here, at least the lower levels of the buildings to be fairly older style of architecture, which is something that I haven't really done a huge amount on in City Skylines. And I also wanted to do a bit of a slight mix of new build, like a slight mix of new bridge infrastructure where they've changed the bridge um, or the infrastructure around here so that it's uh, more modern. You've got this highway in here and, you know, I say modern, but it's probably 40, 50 years old, maybe even um, older. Um, but in terms of the history of this city, I would imagine that that's a fairly more recent creation. So we're going to have this like very cool contrast between the two and I'm, I'm hoping we're going to see that in this episode. Uh, so that's what the plan is. So I'm going to be using no controller a fair bit in this episode. I'm not particularly that great at it yet. So I'm still learning how to use it, but it is super powerful and you can get some really cool looking intersections. But yeah, like I said, not that great at it just yet. I just worked on that little bit up there. I'm going to come back to it and do a little bit more work on it. And that main road that I was working on, that one that goes straight into the downtown, I'm imagining that was the old roads that went across the bay. So this was like the old bridge infrastructure. And now they've converted it into just a one-way road and now we've got like multiple lanes coming into the downtown. But also, more importantly, we've got this highway that stretches alongside it and that way we're avoiding any unnecessary congestion in the city, which is going to be pretty congested anyway with traffic. I reckon there's going to be a lot of people coming in and out, especially when we start building up a bit more of the population and getting some businesses around there. And um, speaking of businesses and population, we're in this weird transition with this series because it's still so fresh and so new. Uh, the population, we need people to be moving in and, you know, everything, it doesn't look like a city just yet. It's a little bit of a mismatch, got a downtown, lots of roads, but, you know, it doesn't really feel like a city at the moment. It just looks like the city has been built in a weird way. And I am would really like to start building up the population, getting some, getting a bit of a vibe going in the city because it's, at the moment it just looks like it's under construction. So we will be doing this episode which is going to be detail work but then we're going to jumping back into working on building the population and getting a little bit more of an established city so that it always feels like a city and we're just sort of chipping away at making things just a little bit more a uh, little bit more happening and I would like to in the next episodes to work on some bigger services because I feel like that's something that I always struggle with. I just will place them randomly in the, on the map because I just think I'll get back to it and then it'll be ages until we finally get to working on power stations and water facilities and um, areas like that. Uh, but what we have done so far is I wanted to build some apartment blocks uh, just right next to this highway. And I wanted these to be fairly modern because I figured this whole area would have been changed quite a lot when the highway was built. Uh, these apartment blocks are way more modern than I reckon they would have built when they did the highway. But just I wanted to show that that modern architecture is around the more recent additions to the city. Whereas you can see along the main road where the main stretch of the downtown is, uh, all those buildings are a little bit more older style of architecture. And I kind of like that. I think we'll do a bit of a mix so we have that real contrast in that area. And uh, what you can see that I'm doing right now is something that I rarely do in my cities and that is create some bike paths. And I think I really do it in my cities because in my city, in Sydney, which is where I'm taking inspiration from, <laughs> funny enough, uh, we have like terrible bike infrastructure. This is like the best place that I have ever seen bike infrastructure in Sydney, which is leading onto the Sydney Harbour Bridge. and. That's that's about as good as it gets for Sydney siders uh, and hence the reason why not very many Sydney people ride their bikes because the infrastructure is just pretty crap. So I am going to 
do less Sydney bike infrastructure and more uh, bike infra infrastructure inspired by other Australian cities that just do it far better than we do. Uh, and it's probably because Sydney is just an absolute mess of roads. So I don't even know where they'd place these bike lanes. And in particular, these bike dedicated paths that would take up a little bit more extra space. And particularly when you're trying to navigate around buildings and pre-existing roads, you only really see this type of um, bike paths in new development. So hence the reason why I'm placing it in an area like this, I think there would have been enough space to build some bike paths in an area like this. And like I said, I am taking inspiration from the bike paths leading onto Sydney Harbour Bridge. And it's pretty much just this one little area because as soon as you get onto the bridge, the, yeah, there is a, uh, a bike dedicated path. But I don't know if anyone who's watching this right now and has ridden across the Sydney Harbour Bridge on their bike, but getting onto that bridge is no easy feat. You have to pedal up some massive, massive paths and it's definitely not for not for everyone <laughs> you're not just a casual rider trying to get onto the sydney harbour bridge you've got to really navigate across some serious paths so i'm gonna try and make mine a little bit better than that but i am i'm quite happy with this whole little bike path that's going on over here so we've got one that goes uh, underneath the freeway and also leads onto this little section here and this path is going to lead onto the bridge we'll get to that pretty shortly but I wanted to put these retaining walls to show that there is this uh, this underneath section. And this was just super fun to put together and makes me just want to do more stuff like this. Which is just something I just have not done enough of, I don't think. Uh, and also, I don't know why my screen has gone dark for some reason. I think I must have been messing around with the LET or relight settings or something like that. Uh, but now I'm messing around with the the lanes and trying to get some good markings going on and I am no expert on this I always do pretty much the bare minimum and that's about it <laughs> I never do anything too fancy um, go and watch skip if you want to watch someone do some fancy stuff with this but uh, I'm just doing some pretty basic stuff and again it's pretty well justified because there's doesn't really seem to be any standard in Australia for how these lines are meant to go you pretty much can do anything in like I don't know I've, I was driving around the other day trying to notice these lines in real life and they're just all, like they're all over the place you can pretty much do any lines anywhere it's sort of it's almost as if they go ah we'll do a line here we'll do a line there and ah, that's probably enough I think the cars will be able to figure it out and another reason why I wanted to work on the roads in this episode is because I have a fair amount of underground paths so I've got the bike paths and we also have this train line that goes underground and because they're going underneath roads that are not elevated, you do get some weird clipping going on, this black clipping that looks pretty ugly, but you can cover it up using asphalt and using the intersection marking tool. You can actually just completely cover over those marks and it just looks so much better. Um, I struggled with figuring out what building to go in between this triangular section of the highway. And I decided to go with this one because it pretty much fits in snug it's a very snug building and I figured they would choose a building that would be just taking up the best amount of space you don't want to choose something that still leaves a lot of open space so close to the downtown and particularly in a location that would be such high demand for real estate so I'm imagining that this is probably a pretty fancy hotel or maybe some sort of resort and it just fits in beautifully. And I'll have to try and find a couple more buildings that fit in just as well. I mentioned in the last episode that I wanted the brick retaining wall to be the main feature for this area and something that was a real, uh, a real icon for the bridge um, on this side of the bay. And you can see that I'm using a fair amount. I'm gonna use it a lot in just a short period of time, but I used it for the retaining wall of this hotel and I thought up the top, maybe this would be a nice little park that, um, you know, it's probably the entrance for this hotel. There's probably got multiple entrances and I think, you know, there's one down below on the main road and then there's one up here. And I figured that this would be like a nice open space because I tend to go to too many buildings rather than leaving open space. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to do that. And it's also about creating those vistas, those areas that attract your attention, those areas that don't get lost in the clutter of buildings and roads 
and you really got to think about that early on because otherwise you start losing that space very quickly it's uh happens so often with me i just build 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 and then you take a step back and go ah there's absolutely no space left and we've all we've just covered this whole area with buildings so sometimes it's important just to think what else do we need rather than just placing buildings but uh, i kept it pretty simple up there just some benches and some paths and i also placed down some um, some parks within that area so it will attract people people will actually go there and visit it and that is very much the case for a lot of my cities i do like them to be just as functional as something that's just you know also looks like a real life city so we will be trying to keep this land value around here really really high so a lot of parks a lot of uh a lot of commercial that's going to be have a lot of attractiveness so hopefully we'll have, have to have to have a good look at the land value and see if it's hitting that mark um, but you can also see now that we are going into the underneath parts of this highway and i wanted just to get out of that same retaining wall look man these retaining walls are so damn nice i've been looking at these for ages on the steam workshop and just thinking all right I know exactly what I'm going to use them for, can't wait to get my hands on them, and here we are. It's so, so good. And they fit in really well with this. Um, only problem is, is that they're a little bit shorter than this, um, this highway. So I am doing a bit of a splice between a couple of them, and, but like I really have my mindset on using this archway one. So it is a little bit taller than I probably needed it to be, and I do actually end up pulling down some of the nodes so that this whole area isn't quite as tall. I think that's definitely something that always happens is I always think that the height is like should be the way it is and then I start building on it and then you realize oh, no, it doesn't look right with the buildings around it and the roads around it and then you have to go back and fix it up. Now I do have to say though because I am talking about all this history with this road and all this history with this bridge and I've really gone down this path of thinking with that mindset as I put in all this retaining wall and all this old infrastructure for these roads. And then I look at my bridge and the bridge, I mean, it just, it doesn't look that old. It is the Anzac Bridge. I think it was built back in the 90s, I believe, um, in Sydney. And it's just not an old bridge. So I do have to question whether or not I am using the right bridge to then be trying to put in all this old stuff and to be talking about this old like this history behind it all so I wonder whether and I'm I'm wondering aloud so that you guys can potentially answer this question for me um, but I wonder whether would it be realistic that they have updated the bridge to be the suspension one and replaced it completely and kept all this old um, brickwork and the highway is probably a more recent like I don't know 30 year addition to the city or do I need to potentially update my bridge to something that is a little bit older so I don't know let me know because there are some really nice old looking bridges on the steam workshop uh, I do love this Anzac bridge it's one of my favorite bridges of all time uh, pretty biased because I drive over it all the time but it's, it's a damn nice looking bridge but uh, I don't know do we um do we update it with something less modern all right let me know I'm, I'm, I'm open to suggestions but I uh, I love this whole underneath section I think it's just so much more enjoyable and I I personally just find it really fascinating seeing cities and building cities that uh, you know have a lot of elevated sections built on hills and mountains and around rivers and underneath sections it's all really uh you know that sort of aspect i think just create so much more interesting areas and means that the city has to do so many more so much more interesting things and i think that's why i struggled with miami when i built that because it's just so flat and so grid like and even springfield i'm sort of struggling a little bit with that one at the moment because you know it's it, it starts to tend to be very much the same when you just build grids and on a flat area so i'm trying really hard to make sure that we're building multiple levels on this and i think that's why i really enjoyed mars uh, city walk city walls mars because there's so many levels and so many layers and it's just so much more interesting than creating something on a flat flat surface with no elevation and no underneath sections and no rivers i think you gotta try and challenge yourself and create something that is um, around an unusual landscape 
Uh, now we are starting to change up a little bit of the roads that sit underneath here because I think I went a little bit too big and I did mention this last episode but you know sometimes when you do map out all the roads early on you can overestimate and underestimate how much space you need um, especially when you don't have any buildings or trees or anything around it to uh, sort of give an idea of how big everything is so I just 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 drew back a little bit around this area and just starting to think about what's going to sit under here uh, because around Sydney the Sydney Harbour Bridge we've got this section called the rocks and I would love to build something similar to this and for those of you who don't know this area it's pretty much this old slummy industrial area and now it's just sitting on like the best real estate in Sydney and uh, basically all these old industrial warehouses and factories have all been transformed into souvenir shops and restaurants and cafes and hotels. It's all very touristic, very nice. And there's still like a lot of these smaller little terrace houses around here. And back in the day, these were the slummy industrial areas and nobody wanted it. And now they're just the greatest this is like the greatest spot in Sydney. I love walking around this area. And for me, I would like to do something pretty similar to this, but maybe what it was like 40, 50 years ago. So not quite as touristic, um, still quite industrial and maybe not the nicest spot in, in, um, in Dundee, you know, maybe we make this spot not as nice. It's, it's up and coming, but not quite there yet. And you know, that's not too far from the truth from uh, the rocks. There are a lot of areas around here that are very run down and need a lot of updating. And there's developers knocking on these doors saying, sell, 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 come on, like we want to develop this area. And uh, a lot of it's changed even since I remember, I've remember seeing this place has seen a lot of changes and I don't know, I kind of want to show that too. So I don't know, we'll, we'll see how we get, we'll, we'll see how we go when we get to that area. But I did want to finish off this episode by detailing and working around this train line that goes in this underneath section. And I wanted this area, I did have a very clear vision for this area. And this is industry, that old industry meets modern terrace houses, these modern condos. So you can see a real mix in this spot. We've got that very oldness, we've got the history and the old charm and then we've got these more modern areas and these guys they back right onto this train line which is pretty crazy close but it's not far from the truth. A lot of uh, a lot of these places are pretty damn close to the train line. Would you like to live here? Because I, I think I would like to live here. <laughs> I don't know, I, I think I would enjoy the, the sound of the train going by. I did live close to a train line and you could hear it as it went underneath the tunnel, underneath the house. And I just loved it. It was so cool. So I potentially would like to live there, but we'll see how the noise goes. But uh, these guys don't have a choice. They're right next to that train line. And it, I, I really do love this spot, especially driving over the bridge and going along this ramp. You can get a really good view um, of the train and yeah, of these, this, little, this little pocket of Dundee. What should we call this area? I don't know what to call it yet. Hit me up below if you've got any name suggestions for what you what you what you're vibing for this little spot. But as you can see, we are getting pretty close and down to the detail work over here. So don't expect this from every area of Dundee. I'm not going to detail everything quite like this. And um, in the next episode, when we work on some of the services of the city and of Oceania, I don't plan to do this level of detail. This is because it is such a focal point of the city, you're driving into the city, driving out of the city, lots of open space um, in between these um, bigger buildings. You want to you wanna see this stuff, so that's why we're getting down nice and close. But I don't recommend doing this anywhere that is easily overlooked. So I'm not going to do this type of detail when we get to the financial district or where those much larger buildings sit within Dundee. And uh, I've also placed this this pretty cool old factory, which is, um, you know, some of the old remnants of this old industrial past. And we're going to have a lot of that around here. I need to subscribe to a couple more because I didn't really have a whole bunch in my collection. But yeah, we will we'll grab a few more so that we can yeah, really create that atmosphere around this area. But to finish off this episode, I pretty much just unpaused the game and 
wanted to see how everything flows because it is all well and good to build all the stuff but if it doesn't work then <laughs> you have to go back and fix it up so i'm basically just watching the traffic go seeing all the speed limits and making sure that it seems fairly realistic and making sure everyone's using the intersections correctly every now and again you might get someone crossing the road in the wrong spot so you just disable the crossing and make sure that they're not doing that but i did want to make sure i did that early on because you know sometimes if you just leave it and go oh, i'll fix it up later on you don't get to it and i wanted to make sure it was flowing and looking all nice early early on in this series and the train line across here is very important i didn't want the train just flying across this bridge so making sure that we've got a nice slow train traveling across the bridge and then as it gets closer to the downtown as it goes underneath that section i wanted it to really come to a crawl because i think there would be a bit of a speed limit around there particularly if you've got some houses that are so close by that um have some noise limits and yeah you got to make sure the trains aren't hauling ass as they go through that tunnel and wake up the people who live in those super fancy condo terrace houses i reckon they'd they'd, they'd probably hate that I wouldn't. I'd, I'd still reckon I'd leave them. Uh, but anyway, guys, that is it for today's episode. It was a fun detailing one, and I loved it. And next week, we'll uh, we'll have to get to some of those services and start fulfilling a little bit more of the residential demand at some point too, because people are wanting to move in. I don't I don't blame them. I want to thank some patrons before I go: Alec Williams, Holly Softy, Brandon Ash, Bob Daktari, Ryan Lee, Gooseberry, and Eric. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.